Hello everyone. So what we're going to study in this video is the concept of parametric curves. So we've already encountered parametric curves when we studied phase plane trajectories for systems of first order differential equations. But now we're going to study parametric curves in detail and learn how we can do calculus directly with parametric curves. All right, so what is a parametric curve? Well, the idea is to give two functions, x is equal to f of t and y is equal to g of t, in terms of a third variable t, which is called the parameter, and then as t varies, the functions trace a curve in the xy plane, and this is what is called the parametric curve. So this is another way of specifying a curve in the xy plane without giving an explicit equation satisfied by x and y. Now here the parameter t can take, value to, can take values either in a finite range like here between a and b, or it could take values all the way from minus infinity to infinity. So the example that we already encountered in our study of systems of first order differential equations was given by the two functions x is equal to cosine of a parameter t and y is equal to sine of the parameter t and in this case t took value between 0 and 2 pi. So how do you know how to trace the parametric curve corresponding to these functions? Well the easiest way to do it is just to pick a whole bunch of values of t uh, anywhere between 0 and 2 pi and then just point, uh, plot the corresponding points in the plane and then you'll see what the curve looks like. So for example, for t equals to 0, I get that x is equal to 1, y is equal to 0. So I know that this is the initial point at t equal to 0. Now I could plot a whole bunch of points between t equal to 0 and pi over 2, but I'll skip that uh, for to, just to be faster. So at t equals to pi over 2, I see that x is equal to 0, y is equal to 1, so I'll end up somewhere here. And at t equals to pi, I'll be here. t equals to 3 pi over 2, I'll be here. In the end, if you plot many other points, you'll see that what you get is a circle. So the corresponding parameter curve here is given by the circle with radius 1 and the xy plane. But in fact, it's a little more than that because I also have an orientation for the circle, right? I can draw a little arrow here because I know in which direction it is going <coughs> for the direction of increasing parameter t. I started here at t equals to 0, and then I just keep moving along the circle until I t equals to 2 pi, I get back to the same original point. So a parametric curve is a little more than just a curve. It is a curve with an orientation given by uh, increasing parameter t. Now if I have a parametric curve, can I get the corresponding equation satisfied by x and y? This is called the Cartesian equation for the curve. And to get it, what I need to do is get rid of the parameter t. Now how to do that depends on the particular functions uh, that define the parametric curve. But in the case that I'm studying here, there's a nice way of getting rid of the t, which is to use trig identities, right? So if I write x squared plus y squared, then using the parametric equations here, I'll get cos square of t plus sine square of t. But I know that this is equal to 1 for any t between 0 and 2 pi. So in other words, I've just calculated that x and y satisfy the equation x squared plus y squared is equal to 1 which is indeed the equation of a circle of radius 1. So this is the Cartesian equation for the curve. The parametric curve is given by this, which uh, includes the additional information of an orientation here for the circle. All right, so let me study a second example of a parametric curve. So now I'm given the two functions, x is equal to t squared minus 2t, and y is equal to t plus 1 in terms of a parameter t. And here I have no restriction on the range for the parameter t. So what is the corresponding parametric curve? So I need to uh, choose a bunch of uh, values of t and then just plot the corresponding points in x and y. So I could have a little table here like I've uh, put in my slide and just calculate what I get for different values of t. So for example, t equals to 0, I get right away that x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 1. So I'll get a point here, x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 1, which will be on the curve. Now for different values of t, say t is equal to 1, what will I get? So x will be equal to minus 1, and y will be equal to 2. So I get here x is equal to 1, y is equal to 2. So this will be another point on my curve. If t equals to 2, I'll get that x is equal to 4 minus 4, so that's 0, and y is equal to 3. So I'll get another point here. And you could keep going like that, so I'll stop just for brevity. But what you'll see is that you'll get a parametric curve that looks like this. And the orientation here, if you look, the t equals to 0 point was here. This was t equals to 1, t equals to 2. So the orientation of the curve goes like this. 
Now that looks very much like a parabola. To see whether this is indeed a parabola, what we can do now is obtain the corresponding Cartesian equation for the curve, so the corresponding equation for x and y. So we need to get rid of the parameter t. So here what we can do is take the second equation here to isolate or solve for t in terms of y. So from y is equal to t plus 1, we get that t is equal to y minus 1. And then we can substitute in the first equation. And what would we get? So we get x is equal to t squared. So that's y minus 1 square minus 2 times y minus 1. All right, so we can expand that. We'll get y squared minus 2y plus 1 minus 2y plus 2, which is equal to y squared minus 4y plus 3. This is equal to x. And this is indeed the equation of a parabola that looks like this, where the uh, midpoint here is at x is equal to minus 1 and y is equal to 2. So it's interesting to realize that parametric curves can be quite complicated, even if the original functions are simple. So for example, if you take the function x is equal to cos of 10t and y is equal to sine of 11t for a parameter t going from 0 to 2 pi, then you may think that the parametric curve will be simple because these are simple trig functions. But it turns out to be quite nice. Here's what you get if you graph the parametric curve. The orientation is not shown here. So it is really non-trivial. It's a very nice graph. Uh, it's also important to realize that just as when we study an implicit function, uh, generally speaking, parametric curves won't be the graph of a single function y as a function of x. What they will do is define many functions implicitly. All right, so now that we know how to define parametric curves, we can try to do calculus with that. So what we want to do here is calculate things like tangent lines to the curve or arc length of the curve and so on, but without getting rid of the parameter, without using the Cartesian equation for the curve. So we want to work in terms of the parameter t. So how can we do that? So let's start with uh, trying to find the equation for tangent lines of a parametric curve. So what we want to do here to get the slope of the tangent line is to calculate the derivative dy dx. But we don't, we don't want to do it by first writing down a Cartesian equation satisfied by x and y. What we want to do is work in terms of the parameter t. So all we have to do is use the chain rule. So we have two functions, x of t and y of t. So we know that uh, well, we can calculate dy dt. But what we want to do now is think of y abstractly as a function of x, which is itself a function of t. And then we use that to calculate dy dt. So by using the chain rule, this becomes dy dx times dx dt. So in other words, we're taking the derivative with respect to the inner function x, and then the derivative of the inner function x of t. All right, and then solving for dy dx, we get an expression for the slope of the tangent lines uh, to the parametric curve in terms of t. So this will be dy dt over dx dt. And this expression turns out to be valid for any point on the parametric curve. So that gives us uh, the slope of the tangent lines. Now there's one subtlety here, which is that I could divide by dx uh, dt only if this was non-zero. Right, so this is correct if dx dt is non-zero. What happens if it is zero? It turns out that this expression would blow up here, at least assuming that dy dt is finite. So what that means is that the slope will become infinite, so in other words, the tangent lines will be vertical. So the, the points where the derivative dx dt is zero, if dy dt is finite and non-zero, uh, become points where the tangent lines are vertical. So let's calculate the slope of the tangent lines for our first example, which was given by the functions x is equal to cosine of t and y is equal to sine of t, with parameter t going from 0 to 2 pi. So to calculate the slope of the tangent lines, what we want to calculate is dy dt divided by dx dt. So all we have to do is calculate these derivatives. So dy dt has derivative given by cosine of t, and dx dt has derivative given by minus sine of t. So in other words, this is minus cotan of t, which is indeed the right expression for the slope of the tangent line. So we can see that explicitly. So for example, at t equals to 0, the tangent line is vertical, which is indeed what happens because this goes to infinity. So this is not actually well defined at t equals to 0. Now let's look, for example, at t equals to pi over 2. t equals to pi over 2, the tangent line should be horizontal. And indeed, 
the cotan of pi over 2 is precisely equal to 0. Now, if I take, for example, t equals to pi over 4, which is perhaps more non-trivial, so let's just do that explicitly, so t equals to pi over 4. Now, we see from the graph that the tangent lines should have slope minus 1, and indeed, minus cotan of pi over 4. So what is this? This is just precisely equal to minus 1. So we see that this is true. So this calculates the tangent lines, the slope of the tangent lines for any point on the corresponding parametric curve. All right, so another thing that we can try to do is calculate the arc length of a parametric curve. So recall that when we calculated the arc length of a curve, what we did is slice the curve into a very, very small curve segment, and then the arc length of each curve segment was given by the square root of 1 plus dy dx square times dx. Now what we want to do is rewrite everything in terms of the parameter t for functions x of t and y of t. But we can certainly do that because we've just found an expression for dy dx in terms of uh, the functions x of t and y of t. It was given by dy dt over dx dt, and here the whole thing will be square. And I can also replace dx by dx dt times dt, because now I understand x as a function of the parameter t. All right, and again, then I can simplify this expression a little bit. So I'll put the terms in the square root on a common denominator. So I'll get this for the numerator over dx dt square times dx dt times dt. And then I'll make an assumption, uh, which is that dx dt is positive, but in fact, I don't need to make this assumption. This is only to simplify the proof. The result I'll get will not depend on this assumption. But if I do that, then I can take the denominator out of the square root. So the square root of the square will give me the positive square root. So I'll get square root of dx dt square plus dy dt square. And I have my dx dt over another dx dt that comes from the denominator inside the square root. So these obviously cancel. And I get an expression for uh, ds, the arc length of a small curve segment. And finally, to calculate the length of the parametric curve, what I need to do is just integrate from the start, or the, 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 the initial point uh, in terms of the parameter t, to the final point in terms of the parameter t of ds, which is the square root of dx dt square plus dy dt square times dt. And I can do the whole calculation here in terms of the parameter t. All right, so we can now easily calculate the arc length of our favorite example, which is the parametric curve given by x equals cos of t and y equals sine of t. So in this case, the arc length will be given by the integral from the initial value of the parameter, which is 0, to the final value, which is 2 pi, of the square root of dx dt square, so dx dt is minus sine of t square, plus dy dt square, which is cos of t square times dt. But then a simple trig identity tells me that the terms, the term inside the square root is exactly equal to 1. So I simply get the integral from 0 to 2 pi of dt, which is just equal to 2 pi, which is indeed the circumference of a circle of radius 1. But one thing that you notice here is that the formula that we just, or the expression that we just got for the arc length of a parametric curve is slightly more general than what we did before. Because, for example, when we calculated the circumference of a circle here, we had to divide it into two half circles so that we had well-defined functions y as functions of x. So here we don't need to do that. We can calculate the arc length directly for any parametric curves. Any parametric curve, all that we need is two functions x of y as functions of a parameter t and a range for the parameter t.